everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and today I'm going to be talking about some things that I watched in the winter of 2020. So while I do read a lot, I do also enjoy TV and movies like I think a lot of us do on booktube. So I thought it would be fun to do like a quarterly series talking about some of the TV and movies that I have watched over the past three months. I have been in a lot of a TV mood in the last little bit of March thanks to this quarantine. So I do have quite a bit to talk about today. Just a couple of movies but several different TV shows and then at the very end of the video I'll let you know some things that I'm in the middle of that I'm not quite ready to talk about yet but you can look forward to it in the next quarterly wrap up. But before we get into the video if you're new here and you're not already be sure to go down and hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content and without further ado let's get started. So I'm going to start with movies since I have a fewer movies to talk about and the first one that I want to mention is a documentary called Forks Over Knives. Now this one did used to be on Netflix here in the U.S. but it was since taken down and I had it on my list for a while saw that it was going to be taken down I think in February and went ahead and watched it and this is a documentary basically talking about how horribly we eat and essentially why everybody should be vegan. I am not a vegan. I watched this documentary because I had heard so many things about it and so many people said that it had completely changed their mindset on how they eat and why they eat the things that they eat. I thought that it would be really really interesting and I'm happy to say that it was. It was definitely impactful to me. Like I said I am not a vegan and I have no plan to fully become vegan after this but after watching this documentary I have really started to think about why I eat what I eat and I have reduced my meat and dairy consumption since then so it was just a really interesting kind of thought-provoking piece I feel like this is a classic documentary that a lot of people have already watched but if you are interested in learning about veganism and how it can benefit your body animals the environment in general this is definitely an interesting piece the next movie that we watched was Marriage Story. We watched this one actually just before the Oscars because we knew that it was nominated and it's on Netflix, easy to find. If you haven't heard of this one, it stars Scarlett Johansson and Adam Driver who at the beginning of the novel, they are getting divorced and we get to kind of follow them as they go throughout the divorce process. This movie also stars Laura Dern as Scarlett Johansson's lawyer and Laura Dern actually won an Oscar for the movie, which she did a phenomenal job. But I very, very much enjoyed this one as well. It is definitely hard hitting. As someone who is married with a young child, this one definitely hit me hard because of the parallels of my relationship and that relationship. Luckily, we are not in that same situation, but it just, you put yourself in their shoes and it was really emotional in that way. I think that both of the main actors are incredibly talented and their dynamics together on screen were just were phenomenal. They worked so well together and it was so believable and emotional and raw. This is just one that I really really loved. Again, I'm late talking about this, but if you haven't seen it yet and you're looking for something emotional, probably get your tissues ready for this one, but I highly enjoyed it. A lot of other people have as well, and it is still on Netflix, so go ahead and watch it. The next one that we watched was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now this one stars Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt, and Brad Pitt is Leonardo DiCaprio's stunt double in the movie. And I don't want to really say what it is about because it's kind of a spoiler, but just know it's a Hollywood based movie with a lot of action, a lot of cursing, and just a lot of old rough Hollywood stuff. It was just really good. I believe that Brad Pitt won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for this, which he totally deserves. He did a phenomenal job and Leo as well just did wonderfully. I love both of them in pretty much any role that they could ever play, Leo specifically. I love him. He did a wonderful job in this role. This is one, the movie is so long. I think this movie is like three and a half hours long so it took us a while to get through it but that's okay. I enjoyed my time through it and the ending was just incredible and just kind of brought it all together. So this is one that if you are a film lover, this is like a love letter to film lovers. And so if you haven't seen it yet and you're worried because it's kind of got some westerny vibes in there, don't sweat it. It's not overwhelming but it's just so good. Next, of course, I had to watch P.S. I Still Like You when it came out on Valentine's Day, and this is the sequel to the To All the Boys I've Loved Before adaptation. 
I don't feel like I really need to explain what this is about. Everybody pretty much already knows. But in the first movie, we follow our main character, Laura Jean, who writes out a love letter to every boy that she's ever had a crush on when she wants to get over him, puts the letters away, never talks to them again. And all of a sudden, one day, she finds out that all of her letters have been sent out. She has to deal with the repercussions of that. That's the plot of the first movie. Then in the second movie, we are dealing with Laura Jean trying to handle a relationship. And there's potentially a little bit of a love triangle going on and chaos ensues. Now I am a huge huge fan of the first movie in this series and all three of the books. I've read the whole trilogy and I love them so much. This movie was no exception. These movies never failed to just make me smile from ear to ear. It was just everything that I needed. It was so cute. I love Laura Jean and Peter so much. They're adorable. And Jordan Fisher came in to play John Ambrose McLaren and he did a phenomenal job. I loved him. I just love everything about these movies. They have an adorable romance every time. They have an incredible family relationship with its ups and downs. Some great female friendships that we get to again see ups and downs of that. Lena Condor is such a talented actress and just in general I just love these movies. I will gush about them all day long. It's just everything that you need and I love that they're dropping them around Valentine's Day. I need the third one like yesterday. This one was so good and if you haven't seen it yet keep your eyes peeled because Jenny Han actually makes a cameo in the movie. So if you spotted that, let me know because I felt really special and awesome for realizing that she was in the movie. But regardless, this is an incredible one. I would rewatch it any day of the week, every day of the week. It was so cute and so good, just like the perfect little pick me up. This whole video is pretty much just ending up being me raving about how amazing these movies are without really giving you any concrete thoughts, but that's okay. And the last movie that we have watched recently is Onward. We actually went and saw Onward in the movie theater about a month ago now. It is now actually on Disney Plus because of everybody being in quarantine. They've moved the movie to Disney Plus, but we did see it in the theater. But this is the newest release from Disney Pixar and it follows our main character, Ian, who is an elf. And he lives in this world where there used to be a lot of magic. The world was brimming with magic. And then technology started developing and people didn't need magic anymore. So it's kind of gone on the wayside. And at the beginning of the movie, Ian is turning 16 years old. He lives with his older brother Barley and their mother. Their father passed away when Ian was really really young. I don't know if he ever even got to meet his father but at the beginning of the movie Ian's mother comes to him and says now that you're 16 I have this thing to give to you and Barley from your dad. He, I don't know what it is he just told me to give it to you and you both were men and it turns out to be this special spell in a gemstone that can bring their father back to life for 24 hours. But when they go to do the spell, it only works halfway and only brings back Ian's father from the waist down. So they wind up having to go on this crazy adventure trying to find another gemstone to bring the rest of their dad back and they only have 24 hours to do it. Now this movie was such a joy. I have to admit I was a little bit skeptical going into it, but it was incredible just like every Disney Pixar movie ever is. We do have a lot of really awesome voice acting in this, namely our two brothers. Our main characters are played by Tom Holland and Chris Pratt and they did an incredible job and just everything about this movie again was so lovely and wonderful. I really appreciated the dynamic of the siblings. I can't personally speak to that because I am an only child but I loved watching them get to get along and fight and form a family and it was just so good. This I definitely think is something that's really different from anything that Pixar has ever done before and again knocked it out of the park just like they always do. I don't think I will ever say a bad thing about a Disney Pixar movie but if you have missed this one it is now available on Disney Plus so it definitely is something to go ahead and plan a movie night around because it was great. So that is it for all of the movies that I have watched over the past three months and now we'll move into some TV shows. So the first TV show that I want to talk about is Supernatural. I am way behind on this one but throughout the last few months we have watched seasons 10 through 12 and we're now in the middle of season 13. Now I don't feel like I need to explain what Supernatural is about. Everybody knows and loves it by now but I have never seen it before and we have been working on this series for more than a year now and we have or we are working our way through so we've watched seasons 10, 11, and 12 over the past few months. Like I said, we're in the middle of season 13 now. I am loving experiencing this series. Jodi is my favorite character. Let's just put that out there right now. She is incredible. I love everything about her and I just love 
all the shenanigans that these boys get into. I swear in every single season, they do something that I'm like, how are they gonna get out of this one? And then they do it and it's just incredible. This is just a classic in my opinion and we are still working our way through it. We have taken a little bit of a pause to watch a different show, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes, but I am loving it, hoping to finish it up, hopefully by the end of the next quarter, that way we can be caught up. Then we can finish up seasons 13 and 14, that way I can watch season 15, which is the final season and my heart will be shattered, I'm sure. We also watched a show on Netflix called Dark Tourist. Now I believe at this time there's only one season out. There's only one season on Netflix, but this is a documentary style show and we're following this journalist named David as he goes to these different places around the world that people go to for really dark reasons. So he goes to Louisiana, to New Orleans where they are big on voodoo and looks at that and he goes to the suicide forest in Japan and goes there and all of these places that people visit for really weird and dark and strange reasons, he visits them and kind of tells us the lore behind them. Now I will say my husband is the one that originally turned me on to this show. It's a little bit more in his wheelhouse, but I still very, very much enjoyed it. I am kind of interested in the darker and more macabre, but he is more so than I am. But regardless, I did still enjoy this show, even just getting to see a different part of the world that I've never experienced before and learn kind of about the history and the lore and the the tragedy and everything surrounding it. It's really fascinating in a weird way. And like I said, there's only one season. It is on Netflix. I think there's only like eight or 10 episodes. So if you're looking for something really fast to binge over to just a couple days and you're interested in something like that, I would recommend it. I don't know if they are planning to do a second season or not. I'm pretty sure the first season came out in 2018. So they might not be doing another one. I don't know. But regardless, this is a quick one to watch if you're looking for that kind of darker side of things. Throughout the winter, I also caught up on and finished The Good Place. So I had already watched season one back before 2020 started. And then throughout these first three months, I watched seasons two, three, and four. Now, The Good Place is probably one of my all-time favorite TV shows at this point. I loved it. I will have to say though that the first season is still my favorite. I definitely enjoyed the first season more than the rest, but just the characters is really what kept me coming back. It was a laugh out loud funny experience all the way through with some definite emotional moments in there and some morals that are like they hit you right here and it was everything I wanted it to be and I I'll admit I don't cry that often in TV shows and movies, but I bawled my eyes out for the entire finale. I was just sitting on our couch just sobbing the entire time. I just couldn't handle it. But this show is phenomenal. Everybody already knows about it. I don't feel like I need to go off on a huge tangent because everybody already loves it. But if you haven't watched The Good Place, seasons one through three are on Netflix and then season four, you're kind of on your own. But regardless, it's so good. If you haven't watched it, just do it. You won't regret it. It's hilarious and just it's everything that you want in your life. Kristen Bell is amazing. Jamila Jamil is amazing. Everybody. Everybody's great. So just go watch it. Another one of my favorites that I've watched recently is One Day at a Time. Now this is actually a remake of a show that came out in the 70s under the same name and then Netflix picked it up, made three seasons of it, and then canceled it. And it has since been picked up by another network called Pop. They are producing season four. So I'm not all the way into season four. Season four is currently airing as we speak, but I watched seasons one through three throughout the winter. Now, One Day at a Time follows our main character, Penelope, who is a single mother, and she is raising her two teenagers, and her mom is living with them, and they are this wild, wacky Cuban family that is just your average family, and they are just dealing with the issues. And the thing that I really like about this show is that you hear so much talk about so many different topics. Our main character, Penelope, like I said, is a single mom, Cuban family and she actually suffers from PTSD. We see her taking antidepressants, going to group therapy, some really important things that need to be discussed. We also have a character that comes out as gay and they have to come out to their family and to everybody else and they go about getting a relationship and we have a lot of commentary about immigration and drug use and just everything that you could think of that is an issue in our society they talk about on this show. But what I appreciate is that it never feels forced. It always feels like a very organic conversation, but it handles everything in the most beautiful way. So I really appreciate the way that this show was made. And like I said, season four is airing on pop right now. I've only watched the first episode, but I feel like it's got the same vibe and they're still doing it really, really well and staying true to what the show means. This one gets really emotional, but again, 
you have heartwarming and heartbreaking moments. So sometimes it's laugh out loud funny, sometimes you wanna get your tissues out. But if you have missed out on this one and you're looking for a fun, light comedy with some darker commentary in there and some more serious topics covered, don't miss out on this one. It is wonderful. Like I said, you can find the first three seasons on Netflix, so just go do it. Another shorter one that I have watched recently is The Mind Explained. Now there is a show on Netflix called Explained, which I believe that I've talked about in another video. And it is a documentary series where they take a bunch of random topics and just make little individual 25 minute shows on them. And this is a mini series of Explained that's all focused around the mind. So I believe there's an episode about dreams and a couple just about the way that the brain works and some different things like that. This one was super, super quick for me to get through and I very much enjoyed it. I will say I prefer the normal explained format where they have a really different topic on every single show instead of spending so much time focused on this one thing. But regardless, I still feel like the show is easy to understand. All of these big, broad scientific topics are broken down into a really easy to understand format and it makes it really interesting. I'm really into psychology, so I thought that that was really interesting going through this learning about the brain. But again, if you're looking for a documentary series that's sciencey, go ahead for The Mind Explained. And if you like it, I would even more highly recommend the show in its entirety. I believe that there are two seasons on Netflix right now and hopefully we'll get another one because I am a nerd and I can't get enough of them. Another one that I really need to talk about is Don't Fuck With Cats, which was a limited documentary series on Netflix that like took the world by storm. I feel like it was in like February. I think there are only three episodes, but essentially there was this guy on the internet that went viral for this video where he was like torturing and killing kittens and it pissed off a lot of people on the internet and they eventually came to the conclusion that they thought that he was going to kill people and they were like tracking him down from halfway across the world and the authorities wouldn't believe them and it was insane but the three episode series just goes off and tells everything that how they figured out where he was and who he was and how they tracked him and all of this different crazy stuff and how the people weren't believing him and it was just insane like i said this is one that i feel like a lot of people watched in like mid-february i believe and it is crazy. I binge watched this because I was just sitting there in front of my TV the whole time like I couldn't look away. It's wild. This is definitely one that you need to binge. If you haven't seen it yet, you can get through it in a day. Once you finish that first episode, you will immediately push play on the second one. So have a couple of hours just dedicated to watching this. But this one was good, but it's kind of a mind fuck. So just go in, just be prepared for that. And the last full show that I want to talk about today is Avatar The Last Airbender. Now I had never seen Avatar The Last Airbender. I did not watch it when I was a kid and my husband thought that I would really like it. We wanted to take a break from Supernatural so we decided to watch this one. Got a free trial to Amazon Prime Video and watched all three seasons so I watched the entire show of Avatar The Last Airbender. I'm sure that everybody pretty much already knows what this is about but if you don't know it is set in this world where there are people who can control the different elements so air, water, fire, and earth. And the people that can control them are called benders and everybody lives in a separate nation depending on which element you can bend or which, which lifestyle you go with. And usually a bender can only control one element but there is a person called the avatar who can control all four. Now before the show starts we learn that the fire nation has attacked some of the other nations and has waged this war and it has now been going on for a hundred years and the avatar just up and disappeared. Well at the beginning of the first episode two of our main characters actually find the avatar hidden inside an iceberg. He has been frozen for the last 100 years his name is Aang. He never wanted to be the Avatar. He ran away and he has been frozen for the last hundred years. So now that he is out, he has to master all of the elements and try to take down the Fire Nation. Now, this was such a good show. Even as a 25 year old woman, I can appreciate how good this show is. Obviously, this is meant to be a kid's show. So there are parts of it that were a little juvenile for me that I didn't really particularly care for. But overall, there is such good character development in this show is one thing that I absolutely adored about it. The character development is amazing. The action scenes are awesome. And just in general, everything about this show was so good. I feel like everybody's already seen this, but if you haven't, go watch it. Every episode's only like 25 minutes long. There's only three seasons. Rewatch it if you feel like you want to because it was really good. Hey everybody, editing Alex here, coming in on this video because I realized that I somehow forgot to mention that we watched Tiger King. 
I don't know how I forgot about this one. I think that maybe I thought that we watched it in April, but we really watched it at the end of March. This has been taking the world by storm. Everybody is obsessed with this and thinks it's insane. We absolutely could not stop watching it. If you're not familiar with the show, which I'd be very surprised at this point, but it follows this man named Joe Exotic who was keeping this like zoo essentially of all these like gigantic tigers in cages and he was in a fight with this woman named Carol Baskin who was advocating for these big cats but also keeps cats in cages and it's like you start out and it seems like just this regular internet fight and by the end of it Joe Exotic you hear this from the beginning Joe Exotic is in prison for a murder for hire plot it was insane. Everybody has been talking about this one. Just know that we have been just as obsessed as everybody else. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about Carol Baskin. I hear that there's going to be a sequel talking about the investigation into her husband's death. So that should be interesting. Regardless, if you somehow have missed out on this one and you are like at home during quarantine and you don't have anything to do, Watch the first episode and you won't be able to stop. It was so fascinating in the strangest way possible, but it was so worth it. So that is all for the TV shows that I have completed over the last few months. And I'm going to very, very quickly just tell you some of the TV shows that I'm in the middle of, which is a lot. So after finishing Avatar The Last Airbender, we did move on to The Legend of Korra and we're now in the middle of season three. So I'm chugging along on that one. There's only four seasons. So that one will definitely be in my next wrap up. I have also been watching Ugly Delicious on Netflix, which is like a cooking documentary series. There are two seasons and I'm halfway through season one. Another one for me that I'm almost done with is The Morning Show, which is on Apple TV Plus. I have been loving this one so far. I just haven't gotten the chance to finish it yet, but there are only 10 episodes out right now and I'm on episode eight. So again, I'll definitely finish this one up soon. Like I previously mentioned, one day at a time I will be progressing on with season four. Hopefully as long as I can find the episodes and watch them I'll definitely be continuing with that one. I have also started the Little Fires Everywhere series on Hulu. I've watched the first episode and absolutely adored it. We'll definitely be continuing with that one. I'm also watching season five of Better Call Saul which is a spin-off kind of prequel series to Breaking Bad. I've loved this one over the past couple of years and they are in the middle of season five so that's where we are with that. I will, like I said, be continuing on with Supernatural. We're in the middle of season 13. And then the last show that I want to talk about is called Dave on Hulu. And this is Lil Dicky, his new show. I love Lil Dicky. I think he's hilarious. This show is like stupid humor, but I'm all for that sometimes. So only a few episodes are out on Hulu right now. And we, are, I think, are ready for episode four. So that is it for everything I have watched this winter. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And let me know some of your favorite TV shows and movies from the past three months. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to go down and give it a big thumbs up as well as hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content. So until next time, bye!